Today we're looking at the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 and as it says on here no compromise silence and performance so we'll actually see if it is quiet and if it's actually got good performance. Uh, it's hard to see from the picture but on here it looks like there's going to be two fans one halfway point and one on the front and then you've got two lots of fins uh, to obviously dispel the heat followed by lots of heat pipes so we'll have a closer look at that in a few minutes and again this is what they class as a high-end product the retail price for this product is £80.99 so obviously for that price that's sort of in a water cooling territory so we've got to see what sort of performance you're actually going to get from this thing and if it actually does compete um, it will dispel up to 250 watts worth of power so that's pretty good so let's have a look at the rest of the box on the side you've just got basically a QR code for product information on the back you've got information about the product itself so you've got all your different information about uh, immense cooling performance, dual tower design and user friendly elegance as well as being virtually inaudible operation. On the other side you've got your technical specifications on here it tells you the dimensions which is quite big that's 145.7 millimeters by 136 by 152.8 so that's pretty high and the weight is 1.13 kilo so that is quite heavy uh, it's mainly made out of aluminium it supports all your 1150 sockets as well as 2011-3 uh, and square ILM 2066 uh, it also supports AMD, AM2+, plus, AM3+, plus, AM4 FM1 and FM2. It tells you about the fans on here as well. The front fan is 120 millimeters by, and it's 25 millimeters thick, but the inner fan is actually slightly bigger. It's 135 millimeters by 22 millimeters thick, and the speed runs at 1,500 RPM, and the middle one is 1,200. The connector is a four-pin, and apparently it will work for 300 thousand hours. On the top it just tells you what it is. Okay so this is what you've got inside the actual packaging. So one of the strangest things was that it actually comes with six, yes, six manuals for all your different languages which I thought was a little bit strange considering most places these days manage to fit it onto one manual or potentially have one manual in English and then have a QR code to scan to get the other languages up. So to include that much paperwork um, just seems a little daft in all honesty. As you can see there, the manual. It shows you exactly how to fit it. Also inside the box you've got all your brackets as you can see the pre-marked Intel AMD you have got some thermal paste it is unbranded so I don't know if that's their own or if they're using something else it would have been nice to have possibly some sort of well-known brand maybe like uh, Arctic MX or something along, li along that lines uh, but unfortunately uh, for all I can say is it is unbranded also comes with the fan, that's the central fan, which isn't attached already to the cooler where the front one is. Um, and then you've got all your clips to clip it on to the inside of the cooler. You've also got splitter there so you can connect up both fans together so that you only use one header for your PMW switch. You've got a central bar which will go under the bottom of the cooler, uh, which obviously bolts it onto your motherboard and the bracket and a couple of screws to do that. It does also include a very nice long screwdriver which is always good. Okay so let's go through some of the features of this product first. Uh, this is according to be quiet okay so it's got two virtually inaudible silent wing PWM fans 
Funnel shaped frame on the front fan for high air pressure achieves only 24.3 decibels at maximum fan speed. Seven high performance copper heat pipes. Airflow optimized coolant fins. Cutouts enhance the RAM compatibility. Easily installable black installation kit can be mounted from above. Brushless aluminium top cover with diamond cut finish and German product conception design and quality control. So again, this is at what they class as a high-end product. And as you can see from it, it does actually look pretty nice. The fan, you can attach in the middle using the brackets. So when you have got it built up, it will look something more like that. Obviously, once you've got your clips in, We'll show you the finished bit when we go through the testing. You've got your fan on the front which has got seven blades. The one that will go in the middle has nine blades and you can actually see the difference in size between the two. The middle fan is quite a lot bigger. You've got your heat pipes on the bottom so there's seven in total. Obviously they sort of split so half one way half the other way but in reality it's actually seven because it goes one will go all the way around and then down and so forth. The bottom, let's have a look how shiny that is. That's a very shiny bottom, so you can see the shine on there. That's probably one of the more well-polished bottoms I've seen in a, a long time. So that looks very, very good. If you look at the fins, they'll look fairly full. It's hard to see the fan all the way through it, which is always good. That means there's gonna be a lot of fins there. That's a lot more heat it can dissipate. The actual, base which can be a bit hard to see from here but if you have a look at the base itself it has got fins on the base as well obviously you'll have your metal beam that goes across there which will screw into the base uh, and onto the through the motherboard and onto the bracket on the top it looks slightly industrial looking especially where the heat pipes go through it tells you it's a be quiet product there but otherwise this is the bit you're going to see uh, when it's inside the machine depending obviously on your case style but uh, generally if you've got a side window you're going to be looking at that and it's got sort of a, the brushed aluminium style on there and it looks pretty good to be honest with you okay so now down to the testing coolers were tested in a real life environment inside a mid-range case with an Intel i5 9600K processor running at stock speeds. While testing took place, no other programs were running and the machine was disconnected from the network just in case it tried to start downloading updates. Each test was done three times just to make sure that the results were accurate and we averaged the temperature between all three tests to get us the average. Okay, so in this first test, as you can see, the Dark Rock Pro 4 came in at 25 degrees Celsius. That was a lot cooler than anything we've tested before, including water coolers, which is a feat in itself. So 25 degrees, running at idle for 30 minutes. So that's pretty good. So let's have a look, see how it performs when the processor has been running at 100% for 30 minutes. And as you can see here, it performs very well uh, not as good as the arctic freezer 2 water cooler uh, but it still performs extremely well and better than all the other air coolers we have tested coming in at three degrees cooler than the nearest competition in this test we're looking at the maximum temperature the cpu actually got up to during the test and as you can see here, it still performed pretty well. It came jointing first uh, with the Freezer 34 Duo from Arctic and was only 2 degrees behind the Arctic Freezer 2 water cooler. The next three tests are basically identical as the first three tests, but we run the fans on full speed rather than automatic. And as you can see on this, Dark Rock Pro 4 outperforms all the competition, including the water cooler. In this test we're checking the average temperature again but with the fans on full and as you can see here it's only one degree behind the arctic water cooler and still a lot cooler than its nearest competition which is the arctic freezer 34 duo and on this last test we checked the maximum temperature the cpu got up to during the testing and it equaled the water cooler at 56 degrees which is three degrees cooler than the nearest air cooler uh, which is very good going.
So in basics, with this cooler, you're actually getting a similar sort of cooling performance as you would get with a water cooler, specifically the Arctic Freezer 2, which is very good for an air cooler. One thing to note though, this cooler is big, and when I say big, it is really big, and it takes up a lot of room. If you've got oversized memory, you may struggle to fit it in. We were fine with our RGB memory because it's not over the standard size, but if you get something what's got an extremely tall heatsink on, you're not going to be able to fit uh, the, water, the cooler in there. Ideally, you need to fit it outside of the case, so that means taking the motherboard out of your case if you've already got it in there and fit it that way. It can be done internally inside the case, but it's going to be a bit more fiddly to do. Those who like lots of LED lights on their fans and coolers, well, unfortunately, this doesn't have any of those on there, which, to be honest, is can be a good thing as well, because not everyone wants RGB lighting over everything, and I'm glad they've actually focused on the cooling aspect rather than putting flashing lights and making it look like Las Vegas. Another thing to note that this product is quite expensive in comparison to a lot of coolers out there. The recommended retail price for this product is 80 UK pounds. I must admit I have seen it online a little bit cheaper, around about 70 UK pounds, but that's still expensive compared to a lot of air coolers. It's in the sort of range you would get a lot of 240 mil water coolers. Saying that, there's only really one award we can give this product due to the performance of it, and that's the Hell Yeah Award.